good morning everyone so today we will continue the module 3 part so uh, steering suspension system and ignition system so myself uh, dr vignesh nai from the department of mechanical engineering aj institute of engineering and technology mangaluru in the last class we studied about steering system so we have gone through the all kinds of uh, steering geometry why you require the steering and uh, different types of uh, steering gearbox and different uh, steering uh, geometry parameters like camber cast king pin angle then scrub radius uh, then we will we are gone through what is the condition for true rolling uh, while taking that turn uh, how it should be and uh, how much angle it should it turn inner wheel and outer wheel what is the relation between that one with respect to instantaneous center so that all those things uh, we have studied in the last class now after that uh, we will go through this uh, suspension part so suspension now today we will uh, go through this uh, suspension system where first we will uh, define objective of this suspension system then we will define uh, our uh, requirements uh, for your suspension system then afterwards uh, we will go for the different types of suspension system so in the different types uh, we will cover the torsion bar suspension system then we will cover the leaf spring coil spring independent suspension system for front wheel and rear wheel then we'll go for the shock absorbers where we are widely using the motor vehicles then afterwards we will uh, end this uh, unit with the a suspension system where uh, more comfortness you require so then we have to go for uh, a suspension system which will be costlier than uh, other kind of suspension system so a suspension system which is very useful uh, whenever you talk about uh, comfortness uh, for the passenger as well as the rider so this is how we will uh, cover this uh, class suspension system so whenever you talk about the suspension so what exactly it means so we won't get a proper road surface uh, or uh, in the roads so we will have a uh, uneven spots or uh, potholes will be there so hence uh, we have to go through the several uh, condition of the road system so while doing that uh, while vehicle is moving on uneven condition the rider as well as passengers should uh, feel comfortness uh, during the riding so the suspension system will makes uh, riders as well as passenger comfortness whenever the road conditions are not good so that means it will absorb the shocks or it will absorb the whatever uh, with respect to that road condition uh, whatever uh, force it will gives that will absorbs so uneven shocks uneven uh, uh, frequency it will absorbs uh, and then it will uh, release slowly so and it will gives the comfortness for your uh, driver as well as the passenger so the ability of vehicle to negotiate rough roads and handle well at high speed is due to your proper design of your suspension system so if you don't have a suspension system what will happen you will uh, have the uneven spot in the road or there will be bump in the road so whenever you moving on that uh, kind of road that shock will be absorbed uh, from the rear axle to the vehicle and then it will goes to your uh, passenger uh, as well as uh, your uh, rider so means uh, that uh, energy or that shocks uh, due to that comfortness of your passenger as well as rider will become less uh, so you won't feel that much uh, safer in the vehicle or uh, discomfort you will feel so to avoid that one we should bring the suspension system into your 
vehicle so that will allow uh, the uh, that will allow or uh, absorbs the shocks or uh, energy from the uneven surface uh, of the road so that's why you need the suspension system so what are the objective then then objective of the suspension system the first objective is the whenever uh, to prevent the road shocks or uh, to absorb the energy from being transmitted to the vehicle parts and thereby it will provide the suitable riding and cushioning effect for the passengers so main function is to absorb the shocks because of the road conditions so it should absorb the shock and uh, it should transmit uh, to the vehicle parts so it should not allow him to go to your uh, occupants or uh, passenger or uh, driver it should not go to that level so it should uh, it should be absorbed and transmitted to the vehicle parts itself uh, so like that uh, it should do the work so that is the main objective of your suspension system then uh, to keep the second objective is to keep the vehicle uh, instable while in motion okay so to keep the vehicle instable while in motion by providing good road holding during the driving cornering and braking so three times while a good uh, uh, when you are driving uh, so several uh, bumps or uh, odd parts will be coming then cornering cornering means while taking a turn there also suspension is uh, is a very matters matters and during the braking also because uh, braking means sudden uh, apply of the load so then also it should absorb the energy so it should not give the shock to the your uh, uh, passengers or drivers so during this condition uh, your vehicle has to keep in a stable mode so suspension also does this work so this is the second objective and third objective is to reduce the wear on the tire so due to suspension system what will happen it will absorb the shock so hence uh, tire wear also it has been reduced so that function also that objective also comes under suspension system and it should provide safe vehicle control and free of uh, irritating vibrations so these are the objective of your suspension system uh, one more is that and it has to maintain proper steering geometry so these are the five objectives uh, of your suspension system next we will move on to the suspension requirement what are the requirement so first one is the vertical vibration and pitching so that means uh, uh, in the vibration we will have the damper which will be absorbs the energy so damper present in the suspension system should eliminate the vibration which is caused due to striking of front wheel to a bump or uneven parts spots so damper is nothing but it should absorb the energy so damper present in your suspension system it should eliminate vibration so suspension in the suspension we will have the damper that should eliminate the vibration which is caused due to front wheel to a bump so first whatever you talk about bump or uh, uh, holes present in your road the first thing is uh, front wheel has to take that energy so very important so front wheel you should have a proper kind of uh, suspension system because uh, it is a front wheel first thing uh, uh, that vibration will occur to the front wheel so front wheel has to take that uh, major energy however so rear wheel also experience this similar kind of vibration but it will take some time from front wheel to rear wheel to transfer because so there will be gap from front wheel to rear wheel so this depends upon your uh, wheel base and uh, vehicle speed obviously because so front wheel uh, as soon as it will transfer then it has to come to the rear wheel 
so it will add some time and as well as wheel base the distance between your wheels so wheel base as well as the vehicle speed so depending upon this uh, condition it will transfer your uh, vibrations so whenever uh, it will take time from front wheel to rear wheel so you may encounter uh, three possible relation between uh, your front and rear suspension frequencies remember because uh, from front wheel to rear wheel so it will take some time so we may encounter three kind of frequencies uh, in the suspension system between the front and the rear wheel the first one is uh, front frequency is higher than the rear frequency what will happen during that kind uh, that time after initial vibration that is after one or more uh, vibration the maximum amplitude occurs because of a front frequency is higher you will get the maximum amplitude after one or two vibration and in the second condition that is a front and rear frequency are both are same if uh, that is the condition then amplitude collapse throughout so amplitude won't be there but pitching tendency still exists because of both are having equal frequencies and amplitude that can be nullified by equal frequencies but pitching tendency will exist pitching we will see in the later stage what exactly mean by pitching next we will have the front frequencies lesser than rear then what will happen during that time pitching tendency also won't be there so then uh, while looking at this uh, three condition what you got by looking at uh, three condition what you got the third condition will be suitable so it is clear that in order to reduce uh, your pitching tendency the vehicle should have the third condition so this is about one requirement next we will have the rolling so what do you mean by rolling so we know the center of gravity in a vehicle it is always above your uh, ground level so a turning couple while taking vehicle is uh, turning uh, taking place uh, a turning couple will be there in the longitudinal axis because uh, while taking the turn centrifugal force will comes into picture which will acting about your center of gravity and uh, uh, as well as forces will be there on the tire road surfaces so this uh, results in because of your centrifugal uh, force uh, there will be a turning couple in the longitudinal axis hence uh, your uh, vehicle will roll on the longitudinal axis so that is called as rolling effect so your suspension system should avoid this kind of rolling effect so you have to keep in mind that rolling should not occur next one you will have the brake dip brake dip is nothing but uh, whenever you brake uh, applied what will happen the front portion that is called as nose in the bonnet you will call it as a so front portion uh, that will be having suddenly it has to be lowered so what will happen uh, this in turn uh, depends uh, this is also in turn depends upon your uh, uh, cg that is uh, uh, centrifugal uh, means uh, gravity center of gravity portion relative to the ground base wheel and other suspension characteristics that also be it has to be reduced the brake dip that is uh, while you are applying the sudden load the front portion of your vehicle that is called as nose that can be lowered that also uh, comes under bouncing so we will see that part in the later stage that has to be lower next uh, unsprung wheels uh, uh, when the vehicle hit a bump they will vibrate so, along with the unsprung parts which stores the vibrational energy so whenever you are in a vehicle this unsprung parts will be there no that will uh, stores this uh, vibrational energy and transmit to the sprung parts through the springs so when the weight of this unsprung parts remember when the weight of this unsprung parts 
if it is greater then it will increase us the more energy due to vibration and that uh, transmit the greater shock to the sprung parts therefore we have to necessary to keep the unsprung weight as slow as possible remember the unsprung weight should be as slow as possible if it is more the unsprung weight what will happen during the bump or uh, whenever the road condition is not good uh, there will be lot of vibration so this unsprung weight will be more than it will stores that energy and it will transfer it to your uh, sprung parts like uh, springs and so we will encounter more shocks if the unsprung parts are uh, weight is very much up so we have to keep that in mind that unsprung weight should be as low as uh, possible so these are the requirements uh, of your uh, suspension system so next we will go for your uh, types of suspension system so types of uh, suspension system we have classified into three categories one is the steel spring next one is the rubber spring then is the a spring so steel spring in this uh, materials we are used uh, uh, leaf spring so different types of steel springs are there so in this first one is the leaf spring then tapered leaf spring then coil spring torsion bar then we have the rubber spring so in that a compression spring will be there then the compression shear spring will be there then steel reinforced spring will be there then progressive spring spring will be there then face shear spring will be there so these are will comes under rubber spring then we will have the a spring in the a spring we have the bellow and fission types so we will go through the in the syllabus we will have the steel and the a spring we don't have any kind of rubber spring over here so only steel spring and a spring will be there in the syllabus so we will cover this one steel spring as well as a spring suspension system so next uh, we will go for first we will cover the torsion bar because it is very easy and it is very simple in construction also we won't have a much component over here in the torsion bar so we will cover this one then we will go for leaf spring and coil spring so next uh, we will come for the torsion bar hey, is this uh, torsion bar it is a simple rod uh, just like a one rod so one rod will be there it will take only torsional stresses remember remember so whatever the torsional load is acting on the vehicle or a torsion, uh, torsional vibration so that only it will take so, so it will uh, stores uh, nearly same amount of energy per weight of that coil spring so whatever the coil spring energy will be there same amount of energy also it will store so per weight of the coil spring depends upon it will depends upon the weight so torsion bar is often used in uh, independent suspension system independent suspension system means each wheel driving a uh, each kind uh, of suspension system so that is called as independent suspension system so Dashan bar is often used in a independent suspension system to take that uh, torsional loads or torsional stresses. So when compared to other system, this uh, torsional system is uh, having a lighter in weight and it will occupies the less space. Remember, so and uh, when uh, whenever because the there won't be a much component in this uh, only one bar and uh, supporting element will be there and uh, it doesn't occupy the most space it will occupy the less space and also it is uh, lighter in weight so sometimes uh, instead of bar uh, you may use uh, torsional tube also in, uh, instead of bar so depending upon the type of weight it can encounter so depending upon that uh, you can use the torsional tube also one end of this uh, torsional bar which will be fixed to the frame okay so one end of this uh, torsion bar is fixed to the frame while other end of your uh, uh, torsional bar it is fixed to the wheel arm remember this is uh, fixed to the wheel arm uh, and supported which is supported by this uh, bearing uh, supported by the bearing and wheel arm whatever is there it is connected to your wheel of the spindle that means uh, here we have the wheel from the wheel we have the wheel spindle 
from the wheel spindle we will have the wheel arm from the wheel arm it is connected to the torsion bar by the bearing this is one end of your torsion bar another end of the torsion bar it is connected to your frame so this is how the construction will be there and this torsion bar it will absorb your torsional loads and that energy it will absorb this torsional bar sometimes we may use the torsional tube rather than the bar depending upon the types so whenever a wheel is a bump it starts vibrating up and down and produces the torque on this torsional bar whenever it wheel will be hitting on your bump so what will happen this will vibrate up and down and produces your torque over here and this torque can be absorbed by the torsion bar so hence this will act as like a spring to absorb your torsional loads so this is how it will be working so whenever it it will pump we uh, will will hit the bump so what will happen the to and fro motion will be there so here will have the uh, torsional load so that torsional load that will absorb by your torsion bar so this is how it will work so hence it will act as a spring so what are the uh, this uh, torsion bar having the advantage disadvantages associated with this uh, torsion bar so first disadvantage it does not take uh, braking or uh, driving torque so this necessitate uh, an additional linkage for the same purpose so only the torsion load which is coming from the road surface so that it can take only so but it doesn't taking care about your braking and driving torque so whenever that uh, braking or driving torque is there then we have to use a separate system for the driving comfortness so that is the big uh, disadvantage of this uh, torsional bars next advantage no friction force exist no damping and no control of vibration produced due to road shocks so since uh, just a simple rod it is uh, so whenever a uh, movement up and down then only it will absorb so your uh, energy because there is no friction or no damping nothing will be there along with the torsion bar and uh, no control over the vibration due to other road shocks so these are the main two disadvantage of this uh, torsion bar we will go for the uh, front wheel suspension system in the front wheel suspension system we will have the two types uh, that is rigid axle free uh, wheel uh, suspension one uh, and second one is the independent front wheel uh, suspension system so usually independent front wheel suspension systems are uh, very widely used uh, in uh, most of the vehicles so independent front wheel suspension system that will be there for your front wheel also rear uh, suspension also it will be there now you will for, uh, go for the front wheel uh, suspension system so in the front wheel uh, suspension system we will have the wheel over here so wheel up will be there that is connected by the king pin then uh, this is connected to the upper wishbone and lower wishbone and this wishbones are uh, uh, connected through the springs springs so spring is provided along with the wishbone so independent suspension system means each wheel is having each suspension system so it is independent to each other so and so that kind of suspension system is called as independent suspension wheel system since wheel uh, each wheel is having the system uh, independent suspension system so that means uh, the space uh, occupied this uh, suspension system will be very less so and so it can provide the more space for your uh, engine components so in the independent suspension system each front wheel is uh, supported by the coil spring and torsion bar along with this one uh, we will have the torsion bar also and so uh, torsion bar also will be there then you have the spring system also it has torsion bar will take the torsional load the spring will take also braking load as well as a uh, driving load so during that uh, it will take care about the energy or shocks occur due to bra braking and uh, driving torque so this also energy is absorbed by this uh, spring so due to upper wishbone and uh, lower wishbone so this uh, independent suspension system is confined uh, 
only for the front wheel in the majority of the vehicles because uh, in the front wheel uh, only they are adopting this uh, most of the time independent front wheel system because uh, cost is very high if you individually if you are fixing to each wheel so rear wheel are different kinds of suspension system so front wheel we will have the this kind of independent front wheel suspension system so this will have the several advantage the first advantage is uh, as already told it provides more space for the engine because uh, this uh, each individual system it is as attached to the wheel so we will have the more space uh, for the engine components and also this provides uh, softer suspension so also it reduces the tendency of wheels to turn about uh, kingpin axis due to gyroscopic action so that means the reduce the tendency of the wheel to turn due to kingpin axis so this axis will be there so tendency of uh, wheels to turn also it can be reduced due to gyroscopic action and it also reduces the tendency of tilting of the vehicle on one side when vehicle is lifted or dropped due to uneven road surfaces this is very important because uh, since we are having the individual uh, suspension system so it will uh, avoid or it will reduce whenever uh, it is uh, having uneven road surface one wheel is uh, going down one wheel is going up so so that uh, tendency has been reduced by using the individual suspension system so lifting of the vehicle or uh, dipping of the vehicle can be reduced due to uneven road surface due to independent front suspension system and also it will helps to keep the vehicle track constant so these are the advantage of your independent front wheel system next we will go for the rear wheel system so for uh, independent front system for a uh, rear wheel so in the rear wheel system we will use the coil springs and the leaf springs so here uh, we have seen the coil springs shock absorber uh, coil spring and leaf springs are extremely used in the rear wheel system so figure is illustrated over here we are not shown any kind of uh, leaf spring over here instead of we have shown only coil spring uh, that is the shock absorber coil spring will be there then we have the piston and sealing arrangement for your uh, coil spring okay the rear wheel housing is uh, mounted on the spring so rear wheel housing will be there that is uh, mounted on the uh, spring and it is to set to a upper and lower arm control so this is the control arm this is the lower part upper part also will be there so lower part uh, control arm will be there upper part control arm will be there so these uh, springs are connected to the set of upper and uh, lower control arm and universal coupling will be there that will be connected between the wheel vertical and the sliding coupling to maintain the wheel track constant so to maintain wheel track constant we are using this universal coupling and this method is used in dedoin type of axle and the control arm uh, control arm will be that no uh, pure points are rubber bushed this pure points are uh, rubber uh, bushed because uh, it will absorb that energy rubber bush and one end of the arm is connected to the housing and other to the frame so one is the wheel housing it will connect and one more is uh, connected to the frame okay the arm arrangement allows the rear axle housing rear axle housing to move up and down but prevents the excessive fore and aft and side to side movement fore and up and down it is allowed excessive fore and aft and uh, side by side movement it is not allowed so only up and down movement it is it will allow this control arm because of the control arm so main disadvantage of this kind of system is uh, ignition loss is uh, high and uh, as there is a uh, many number of parts number of parts are increased and so maintenance required will be very much high for this kind of system and uh, steering geometry is misaligned with the wear of the component so due to wear of the component and uh, because of this uh, 
showing geometry misalignment may take place. So, so these are the disadvantage when you are talking about a independent front wheel suspension for the rear wheel. So usually that will be not independent for a rear wheel suspension system. Next we will go for the some uh, terminologies in uh, vehicle. That is pitching, bouncing kind of thing. So we will directly will go to the uh, so this is the car so in the car this axis is known as this axis remember this axis is known as longitudinal axis this is known as longitudinal axis and this axis is known as see this axis is known as lateral axis and the vertical this one is known as vertical axis so this one is the vertical axis this one is the your uh, for example the side uh, window will be then uh, this side window to this side window so that direction axis is known as lateral axis and uh, front window back window that di uh, that direction is known as your longitudinal axis this is x this is y and this is z z is vertical y is lateral and x is longitudinal in this way you just remember this longitudinal lateral and vertical axis so this is uh, given over here so this one is longitudinal this one is lateral and this one is uh, vertical so from this diagram itself it is uh, very clear if your vehicle is rotating about a longitudinal axis then it is that then it is called as rolling so rolling will occurs due to longitudinal axis and pitch will occurs due to your lateral axis and in a vertical axis that is the yaw p q r p is with respect to s q is with respect to pitch r is with respect to vertical P is nothing but row, Q is nothing but pitch and R is nothing but yeah this is already your study but still uh, just repeating that is what you mean by rolling what you mean by pitch and what you mean by yeah so the center of gravity as always it will be always above the ground level so at certain height it will be there above the ground level your center of gravity that is CG CG represent your center of gravity during the turning what will happen what will happen during the turning your vehicle will get a turn so during the turning what will happen a turning couple will be produced because of your centrifugal axis because you are taking a turn like this or like this what will happen there will be a turning couple will be there with respect to your longitudinal axis because of this uh, turning couple your vehicle will roll like this so that kind of uh, action is known as rolling action so whatever the motion you will get about the longitudinal direction because of your turning couple while taking a turn that is known as rolling so while taking a turn you will get the turning couple about the longitudinal axis because of your centrifugal force due to turning and uh, which will act on your uh, center of gravity and uh, forces at uh, tire and road contact surface this results in a motion that motion is known as rolling motion this is about the rolling of the vehicle so this uh, will cause us what will cause us uh, your uh, left hand left hand see rolling will be there no the left hand uh, suspension system will move out of the face with the right hand suspension system so your suspension has to carry that rolling effect so that way the design has to be done suspension system design has to be done so that uh, rolling should not take place while taking the vehicle so obviously it uh, depends upon your uh, speed also so 
that uh, within a controllable speed your rolling should not uh, occur next we will have the brake dip brake dip is nothing but while you are applying the brake the front portion this portion front portion this is called as nose of the vehicle okay the front portion is always called it as nose of the vehicle due to braking it will dip or it will go downwards so that kind of motion is known as a dip brake dip got it so brake dip is nothing but due to uh braking effect the front portion of nose of the vehicle will be dip so that is known as brake dip so next uh, we will go for the pitching pitching is the rotary motion about uh, about uh, lateral direction through the vehicle parallel to the ground so that is nothing but with respect to this direction your vehicle will have the rotary motion that is known as your pitching so due to this the pitching what will happen this causes your front suspension system to move out of the face your pitching will causes your front suspension to move out of the face when compared to rear so this is it will affect on the suspension system so and your suspension system should uh, take care about the pitching of your uh, vehicle so this is very important for the suspension system then we have one more thing over here that is uh, bouncing so bouncing is uh, is uh, nothing but you will call yeah but uh, in a vertical direction the motion of the center of gravity so yaw, it is not exactly your bouncing so bouncing is nothing but motion of you see now it is fixed we will have fixed the center of gravity for the vehicle this center of gravity itself it will move because of motion of the vehicle motion of this center gravity in a vertical direction motion of this center of gravity in a vertical direction so that is known as bouncing so it can be front end or rear end of a bounce it depends so front end uh, means uh, it will move up so center of gravity also move up in this uh, vertical direction rear end means rear end will move up so with respect to your uh, vertical so center of gravity will also move on a uh, vertical direction this is how you are uh, pitching will be the bouncing will be the brake dip will be the so you should know about all those things because uh, during suspension system these things has to be controlled within this certain speed limit so suspension system should take care of this one parameters so dynamic pitching will be the which will be combination of pitch and roll combination of pitch along with the roll that is known as a diagonal pitching so this is how the parameters will be the pitching and bouncing i have the one comfort curve so just a curve that will define when uh, shock absorbers are there when uh, without shock absorber how the damping will take place or how the amplitude will moves so we have the on y axis uh, magnification factor and x axis we have the frequency ratio depending upon that one couple curves are uh, given uh, it will shows the variation of your amplitude of vibration with and without shock absorber so whenever the without shock absorbs uh, other then we have the more amplitude one or two then it will damp out whereas shock absorber gradually it will take and uh, we will get the smooth riding effect or uh, comfortness will be very high from this graph for the shock absorber so in this we have the one uh, term called magnification factor what it will define this is the ratio of maximum displacement of the forced vibration to the deflection due to static force in the system so that will define your magnification factor next we will go for the types of swing so springs are so springs are commonly used uh, uh, in the cars and trucks uh, you have seen even this uh, bikes also you have seen that one springs shock absorber in the rear end so there also you have seen this uh, kind of uh, springs 
and in your truck you are seeing that leaf spring a big big leaf spring so you have seen so now we will go through this one so we have uh, different types of springs so one is a leaf or a laminated spring then we have helical or coil spring and third one is the torsional bar spring and fourth one is the rubber or elastic spring fifth one is the hydro elastic springs then sixth one is the a spring so in this we will have torsional bar is already over leaf and helical coil spring we will check then we will go for a air spring as well as shock absorber this many are the so that we will cover now first we will go for the leaf spring or it is also called as laminated spring remember leaf and laminated springs are one and the same similarly helical and coil spring are one and the same so in the exam if they ask helical spring then you have to explain because usually we will term it as coil spring so or in general ways we will call it as coil spring we don't call it as helical spring sir. so sometimes in the question paper they may ask helical spring also so be careful about that one wordings coil spring helical spring one and the same similarly leaf spring we will call we won't call it as laminated spring leaf spring we will call so sometimes they may ask laminated spring so that means leaf spring only so don't confuse it so go through this uh, wordings or uh, uh, naming of these springs uh, properly leaf spring and laminated spring one and the same similarly helical and coil spring are one and the same so this is the leaf spring you have seen already so many vehicles uh, you have a spring so this is the multiple leaf spring if it is only one is there then it is called a mono spring mono leaf spring or single mono leaf spring or if it is more than one then it is called as multiple leaf spring so how it will exactly works so first of all we will study this one the leaf spring which will be made up of steel plates remember this will be made made up of a steel uh, steel plate which is in a semi elliptical shape as shown in your figure so these are the commonly used in automobile with the rear uh, part or uh, rear uh, suspension system so usually we won't get uh, this kind of uh, uh, springs in the front suspension system it is usually used in the rear suspension system so this leaves uh, in a multiple leaf spring uh, these leaves are held together so these are held together by means of uh, one bolt center bolt so in uh, each uh, leaf spring uh, we will have the hole so in this old uh, hole we are fixing the bolt so using the u bolt so we are uh, holding together this all the leaf uh, spring so many leaf spring are the special springs uh, so all the uh, springs uh, will have the special springs uh, have a special insert insert will be there between uh, the leaves uh, which will uh, permit the leaves the slip over one uh, one over the other so whenever it won't uh, extension of the length will take place uh, then uh, it should uh, slip one over the other so for that one we have the special springs uh, which have a uh, special insert uh, between this uh, between this uh, uh, between this uh, leaves okay so we will have the special insert so that uh, this uh, so leaf will be slide one over the other it is possible okay then the spring leaves are uh, graduated in length that means uh, the top uh, spring will have the more length as the we will move towards the downwards the length of the spring will uh, keeps on reduced that is we have the graduated length in the multiple leaf spring and front end of this uh, this if we have a front end this is called as back end the front end of this uh, largest leaf is bent into a circular shape and this circular shape uh, whatever you have bent uh, that is called as spring eye okay this spring eye is attached to the spring angle so front end of this uh, spring eye it is attached to the spring angle by means of bolt that means we have fixed uh, over here okay then uh, 
whenever you fix to the rubber uh, means uh, hanger spring hanger by means of bolt we will provide one rubber bushings over here between your bolt and uh, uh, spring eye rubber bushings are provided what you do is uh, this uh, rubber bushing should uh, should have the purpose so what it does uh, two purposes are there of rubber bush one is to absorb this vibration so thus preventing it get from up to the vehicle frame so it will absorb the energy so that it will uh, avoid that transfer of energy to the frame so that is the one uh, purpose and second purpose of this rubber bush to allow the spring guy to twist back and forth as the leaf spring bends because whenever the bumps are coming it will extend the length so this rubber eyes which will allow this spring guy this spring guy will be done to twist back and forth as it lengthen the spring blade so that will be two purpose of this rubber bush so this end is over the another end will be there again it is made to the circular shape that is called as spring eye so this uh, spring eye is there no this end uh, this is attached to the frame through one shackle see over here you can see one shackle is provided so one shackle is provided that shackle is uh, attached to your frame so this shackle will uh, allow so uh, this shackle whatever you have kept over this uh, eye so this will allows the change in length of your spring remember whenever it, this is the normal condition so this will be movement because of your road condition this will move so your length will changes and hence it will absorb the energy okay so this shackle will allows change in the length of your leaf spring as it bends so as the spring is uh, pushed uh, upward and downward bumps uh, as the spring is uh, pushed in the upward as well as downward bumps or holes in the road the distance between the two spring eyes this spring eye and this spring eye will changes so this shackle will act as a swinging support and that permits change in the length in the leaf so very much important this shackle so because it should allow the change in length of the uh, change in length of the leaf as well as it will gives the swinging movement for this uh, leaf spring so this is how your uh, laminated spring or uh, leaf spring will arc, uh, works so in the laminated spring once again we allow the uh, so many leaves will be there so that leaves will be connected to the u bolt at the center which is having the circular hole in the each leaf and through that we have the u bolt will be there that will be clamped together one uh, splitter will be there so that uh, it will one leaf will be slide over the other and uh, one end of the largest leaf uh, is in a circular manner that is called as uh, high or spring eye so this spring eye is connected uh, to the bolt to the frame through rubber bushing so rubber bushing should have the absorb the energy and thus prevent it from the getting up to the vehicle frame and allows this uh, uh, this rubber bush also allows the spring eye to twist back and forth as the leaf spring bends next uh, another side we will also have the spring eye which is connected to the frame through shackle so this shackle will allows uh, swinging motion of this uh, leaf spring as well as whenever it changes the length it should permit it so allows the changes in the length of the leaves so this is how your uh, laminated spring will uh, work so this is in a semi elliptical leaf spring so this is how your leaf spring uh, works so next we will move on to the coil spring see coil spring uh, simple it is uh, so nowadays uh, very much we are using this uh, coil uh, spring so uh, we are known that one uh, coil spring this is very popular because of limitation involved in the leaf spring uh, in the front system suspension system because we can't use that leaf spring in the front suspension system so in the front system system uh, usually we will use the coil spring in this uh, system we will have the coil springs 
cause spring l between the spring sheet seat will be the or pad will be the so it is l between this uh, to pad and all downs will be the where we have the spring all downs will be the which is in the horizontal shape this one will be the helical shape so this all downs will be connected to the pad or the seat will be the which will be one side we have the car frame then we will have the another side rear axle housing so whenever your bumping is there so what will happen this will compress your spring and so this spring will absorb that energy then after uh, absorbing the energy it will be back to the original speed so during this time what will happen sir in the coil spring alone if it is there what will happen there will be more movement of uh, compression and expansion that means while uh, entering into the bumper area so initially we will have the compression of the spring so that will absorb the energy and due to spring characteristics what will happen next what will happen it will have the expansion of the spring so that will be continue or that will be repeated for the sometimes so if only coil springs are used so that is not at all useful so along with the coil spring we have to use some other techniques so how to regain that uh, original shape after absorbing the energy so coil spring in this way it will absorb the road shocks got it so this is how your coil spring will uh, work so along coil spring uh, it uh, doesn't have a much effect so shock absorber absorber is in use so shock absorbers are necessary as the spring doesn't uh, settle down fast enough because uh, in other words if you talk so after spring has been compressed and released it will continue that process uh, that is shortening of your uh, spring and lengthening of the your uh, spring that kind of oscillation it will uh, repeats for a several time and so uh, we will feel discomfort of the passenger or driver or vehicle will have some kind of oscillation will be there for a certain period of time for example if a car it's a bump the spring will compress us okay that part is okay first part is okay the spring is uh, taking that energy then afterwards uh, spring will expand after the wheel passes through the bumps that means expansion of your spring will take place that causes a car to thrown upward so this is the problem so now having the over expanded the spring again it gains short also so that will be continue this action that is once shorter once expansion short expansion that amplitude has to be die out till that this will be repeated so this action causes will uh, momentarily leave the road and car drops down so this action will be repeated until oscillation gradually dies out that means amplitude gradually dies out so till that this uh, uh, portion will be that is expansion and compression will be taken care so such a spring action on the car would produce us a very bumpy and uncomfortable ride for the drivers as well as passengers so that will be dangerous uh, this will be in a straight road it is uh, again discomfort but uh, not that much dangerous but in a turning uh, uh, it will be there no during that time Uh, controlling of the car will be very difficult whenever we will use only coil spring so this will be dangerous so obvious that therefore a device is needed to control this oscillating action of your spring so that device is nothing but shock absorber so shock absorbers are very widely used so out of uh, two minutes Too many types of shock uh, shock absorbers are available. Vane type is there, or post piston types are there. So so many types of uh, shock absorbers are there. But in that telescopic shock absorber is most commonly used shock absorber. So in this uh, telescopic absorber, several components will be there. So we will just check this component. So we will have the two cylinders. So 
one is the inner cylinder this one is the inner cylinder a and this one is the outer cylinder b so this one is the outer cylinder this one will be the inner cylinder then we have the two valves so this one is valve one this one is valve two okay so this one is valve two this one is a valve one so fluid will moves uh, from valve uh, this to the air here to here so in this way you are uh, you will have the fluid motions okay next we will have the three piston rod so this will be the piston rod then we have the gland so sitting of the piston to the over here for properly it has to be done this one is the cylinder head whenever you talk about a cylinder then uh, head should be there so this one is called a cylinder head then we have the eye connected to the axle so this one is uh, high is there so that is the cylinder which will be connected to the axle and this one is uh, i is connected to your frame so these are the component of your uh, shock uh, absorber at the bottom of the your inner cylinder uh, in the piston a series of valve controls will be there so the movement of hydraulic fluid will be there through this valves within this uh, shock absorber that will absorb your energy or shocks okay so this is the diagram of your uh, telescopic shock absorber so in this uh, piston rod is uh, attached with the two way valve that is valve 1 and valve 2 okay so which is attached between your cylinder and the tube cylinder and the tube so this is called as tube so cylinder and the tube okay the inner and outer cylinders are filled with the oil so see over here you can see oils inner cylinder also filled with oils outer cylinder also filled with the oil when uh, whenever this vehicle comes across a bump for example we will come uh, uh, take a bump in the front of the road so vehicle will uh, coming around that bump what will happen the eye connected to the axle so whenever eating the vehicle eating the bump so i connected to the axle is will move up so this will move up that means it will push us the it will push us your oil so oil will be pressurized by the movement of this eye so this uh, pressurized uh, movement of oil which will pass us through the valve one but what will happen there will be a restriction over here that means it is connected to the frame and uh, all the while it cannot be moved towards this side means some part after exerting the pressure over here some part of the oil has to come from, from this end so this valve so hence that expansion can be reduced because of oil movement to this oil oil movement through this valve so some part of the oil will go so from this valve but what will happen so there will be a restriction will be there because of restriction because this frame is fixed and this eye is fixed to the frame there won't be a much movement of this uh, cylinder and so uh, oil will exert some pressure in the reverse direction through this uh, valve so hence that expansion will be nullified so hence we won't get that kind of uh, repeated action because of this uh, cylinder cylinder and uh, piston arrangement so in this way in this way you are uh, uh, uh shock absorber is working telescopic shock absorber it is working so this is about while uh, taking the uh, bumper uh, in the upward direction while bump is taking the downward movement same will be there in a reverse way so while will move from year to year and this will move from over to year because of the downward movement of this one and so it will come back to the original position so this is how your telescopic absorber will work okay next we will have the air suspension system so air or pneumatic suspension so what you will call it is incorporated uh, in a tourist system because a system a suspension system will give the proper uh, comfortness high comfortness will be achieved 
from this air suspension system and so and because it is also very costly compared to other suspension system and so it will be adopted in a high end vehicle and uh, uh, tourist buses uh, we will have the air suspension system for uh, riding comfortness for the passenger so air suspension system will have the following advantage over your conventional system first one is uh, spring rate uh, varies uh, much less between the laden and unladen condition this decreases the dynamic loading what do you mean by first laden and unladen condition laden means uh, it is the vehicle is loaded with full passengers so for example if you take uh, your car your car is occupied with a five seater so if you are having the five seater means five passenger is filled then it is called as laden condition unladen condition means if you don't have any passengers except driver then it is called as unladen condition so there will be load condition will be varied uh, in a uh, uh, tourist bus so, so sometimes you have a full seater along with the standings will be there so uh, loading condition will be more sometimes there won't be a passenger only one or two will be there there is uh, unladen condition and so loading condition will uh, differ uh, during uh, in the bus uh, so that uh, will affect your suspension system so in a spring coil uh, or a shock absorber it will have a particular loading condition it will operate so means it will give more compactness for the particular loading range so but uh, it won't uh, adjust for the dynamic loading condition so this a suspension system is not like that it will adjust for your dynamic loading condition so and so spring rate varies uh, much less uh, between a uh, laden and unladen condition so that will decreases the dynamic loading so that will be advantage for your air suspension system and changes in the headlamp alignment due to changes in the load are avoided then we have the improves the riding comfort for the passenger then we have the longer service life for the vehicle due to improved smoothness so how this air suspension system will work we will have the air springs remember in the air system system we will have the air spring for each wheel front wheel we have two air springs rear wheel will have the two air spring air spring is uh, nothing but your uh, rubber type or uh, plastic uh, tough rubber or uh, plastic uh, type of uh, uh, baggage will be there so that will be connected and how it will work so so first it will takes the air from the atmosphere and uh, it will goes through the air filter where the contamination will be eliminated through this uh, filter then it will compresses uh, around uh, 5 to 6 bars in the compressor and it will be stored in the accumulator then we will add the relief valve because uh, for the safety purpose relief valve is provided so if the pressure is high then it will be relieved from this relief valve so that pressure will always maintain in the proper range so that system will works fine from the relief valve it is going to the lift controller valve so lift controller valve means uh, we have some it is provided so uh, with respect to that it only the lift controller valve will be working from that it is going to the leveling valves leveling valves so leveling valves means how much height it has to go means how much amplitude it has to level so that will depend upon your leveling valve from the leveling valve it is going to the a spring so this uh, compressed air that will push us the a spring to the rubber uh, baggage or uh, plastic baggage and so your suspension will works so that will absorb that energy depending upon your air pressure so in this way your air suspension will uh, works this is a uh, somewhat electronically controlled suspension system okay this is how your air suspension system will uh, work so this will ends uh, your uh, suspension system okay so next we will move on to the ignition system in the next class okay so before that uh, some questions are there regarding to this question uh, this class so how i have made is uh, different student should answer different kind of uh, questions with respect to your usn you just check what kind of question you got 
so you have to write that question and you have to submit to me so 16m is 04207 to students and then regular students 1 to 2 so they have the ackerman steering mechanism with the diagrams they have to write the uh, uh, answer for this question and they have to submit to me 17m is 03 to 17m is 06 power steering mechanism 17m is 07 to 17m is 12 they have the chassis frame then uh, 17m is 14 to 19 they have the effect of caster with diagram 20 to 26 to, they have the objective and requirement of the suspension system then we have the uh, 27 to 31 explain the torsion bar with the mechanism then uh, 32 to 36 independent front wheel system for front wheel only not for rear wheel with diagram 40 to 46 uh, what do you mean by pitching bouncing with diagram there to explain pitching and bouncing 47 to 52 laminated spring system 54 to 59 coil spring system 60 to 66 shock absorber then diploma student 400 to 480 that to explain the as suspension system so these are the questions uh, we are having so with respect to us just uh, write the answer for this one and uh, submit to me okay so this will end our uh, steering and suspension system of classes next class we will go for the ignition system so next class uh, we will finish uh, for a uh, module 3 so after that uh, we will give one assignment Thank you.